Hello, uh, this is Chris. Uh, today I will be talking about contact forms, how to create a custom contact form on your website, um, how to make the page and how to create um, the forms. ReadyHTML has the capability of generating um, pretty cool cost contact forms. Um, so let's let's start with that. So assuming you know your business, you know you uh, an individual, you know you you need a contact form you know more than what we provided so you need something better than just your typical main contact you know you want to collect some type of reservation you want to collect more information a more detailed form or you actually want to collect more information on an actual page itself you know because you have the sidebar um, with which is a a plugin within the site there'll be a video about about this feedback it's called a feedback contact um, so but for now let's talk about your actual contact page. Let's start with pages. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So let's call this one contact page. Okay. The first thing you want to do is go into page options and you want to change your template type to contact template because that's a contact page. Secondly, you want to obviously add this to your menu because on your website you have home and resources so where do you want your contact to go you want it to be page 3 so how about we make it you know you can name it anything and let's call this link contacts even though the page is called contact page let's call it contacts you can name that differently I would either way you feel like now you want to fill out your SEO keyword separated by tags you know you want to fill out all that good stuff leave the page empty if you want or you can put in you know some people on be above the contact form they usually like to have you know the address you know your street address you can type all that info in here if you needed to um, but now I'm just gonna focus on the form itself so let's go ahead and save this page we just created so now on the main website if I go to the main site we now have a contacts tab if I click on it, it takes me to a contact page with zero content on it so how do we get the form there? How do we do that? We go to theme, design center, because we're designing a contact form. It's the last tab, the second to the last tab. It might not be the last tab for long because we're always adding and building and making new features um, to our, our design and our platform. So, you know, don't bank on this being the last tab, but for now it is. So let's click on it. As you can see, we have a lot of explanation as to what you can do. Um, you know, this is where you actually build the custom contact. But for the most part, you've got two main options. You can use the default form or you can build a custom form. The default form is just as simple as typing in something like that. Contact, semicolon, and your email. So if my email is admin at readyhtml.com, just that simple. Using default values, I can say save settings. Just having that information alone automatically generates a form on my page. And that's it. I just refresh the page, and that's the default form. I can fill out all this information and it gets sent to my email address which I which I uploaded. All these are default. If I try to send this, obviously I get errors because you know the form actually checks for valid characters, valid information. Okay, so that's the basic, that's the default. Just by entering in contact and just, just the way it explains it right there, you know, for your default. So if I want to send it to multiple recipients, you know, like a form, I want multiple multiple emails, multiple people to receive, I can just put a comma, space, and new email. You know, support at readyhtml.com. So if I were to save this right now, this form on our contact page, let's not resend that. This form on our contact page will automatically send the results of this form to both emails. Okay, so it's just as simple as that making a simple contact form. You know, 
not complicated. So what if you wanted to go custom, advanced, you know, more detailed, a more specific, a more custom form. You're not really into the basic form. You want more stuff. You could do that as well. So let's start with the basics. This explains what the what the default types are. So you've got different types of fields. Name, email, subject, phone, website, message. Those are the defaults. What about custom text fields, custom text areas? The way this works, it works in a very straightforward, easy way. And we made an example for you. Right there. If I copy this whole text and I pasted it here, this is just a quick example. And I save this. I'm going to explain what each one of them does, but Let's go ahead and refresh this page. I, as you can see, I just created a, a lot more stuff. You know, do you like this builder? Yes or no? That's a check, uh, a radio button. That's a text box, text area, a drop down. You know, a select area with two of them already pre-selected for me. Who killed Roger Rabbit? You know, some more texts. You know, my capture. How are you today? Another text. Very simple. And how do I do that? It's actually a lot simpler than you think. So let's walk through this real quick. So earlier I talked about this is all you need to just send the default form to display and send a default form. If you need to send more than, to more than one email, you just put a comma and the new email goes there. What if I wanted to do something completely different? So let's start with my email. So I want this form to go to admin at readyhtml.com okay now I want to build my custom form comma space I want to make a custom well let's go with one of the defaults so name is a default okay so let's go let's collect the name we don't need this to be um, required a required field so we'll just leave it at that name comma space let's collect the email I type in email now to make a field required all you have to do is put an exclamation mark after it because name and email are default fields you know I can just type in name or email and for email I'm just gonna put an exclamation mark and that just means that it's a required field there would be an asterisk right next to it right here saying that you have to fill that field out so let's put a comma space um, a phone Phone number is a default field as well. So let's put a comma. What else is a default field? We have a website. It tells you all the default fields up here. Phone, website, message. Okay. What if I want to put in a custom field, like a text box? So I can go text. What do I want to name the text box? I want to, I want to name this, how are you today? Question mark. You notice that I'm wrapping this in parentheses, right? So it's going to be a custom text box, and the question asked above the text box is going to say, how are you today? That's it. Put a comma. So if I were to save this right now, and I came back to my contact page, and I refreshed this page, you notice now I have name, email, phone number, website how are you today all text boxes these are the defaults this was the custom I had to define this and you notice this as an asterisk right next to it because it's a required field now if I came back here to my contact form and I put in an, ex uh, an exclamation mark right in front of phone name website right, right in front of everything but my custom text and I say save you will notice now that if I refresh this every one of them is going to be required except for my custom text so let's go ahead and refresh the page and there you go required 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 that isn't what if I want to make this required as well very simple come back to your form and put an exclamation mark in front of your text just like that Let's go ahead and save that. Come back to our site and refresh the page. And now that's a required field. 
if you try to send this form, it tells you this field is required, that field is required, that field is required. So just remember, putting an exclamation mark, you know, at the end of your text or your, you know, your custom or your default uh, text value or uh, input value would make it a required field. But that's not all. What if we want to we want to collect the text area? Now we know that we have a default text area called message. Okay, so I can go message right there. Okay. So message right there puts a message box right under how are you today. So if I save that and I come here, oops, let's not resend. Let's just refresh the page. Okay. Puts a message box right there. But what if I have another other than a message box, another custom area I want? Message is called a text area. That's why we go custom right there. That's a text area. It also tells you what it means. So here I can say text area. Let's call this text area. Enter in even more information about yourself. So that's my text area. Another text area, which is the message is a default, text area is another. So if I save that and I came here and I refresh this page now, now I have another one which says enter in even more information about yourself. And a user can type in, you know, whatever information they want to enter in about themselves. Okay, but that's not all. You know, what if I want a select box? You know, what if I want a user to select a couple of options, you know? Um, so let's go select. Select is a custom text or custom field. So let's say select, and I want the name of the select to be, how did you hear about us, you know? That's the question that's asked. Remember, anything anything custom, any custom text that is going with a custom field needs to be wrapped in, a, in parentheses. Okay? So this says select, which is going to be a select box. How did you hear about us? That's going to be the question asked. So what are my options? Options are going to always be equals to parentheses again. Um, how did you hear about us? One of my options would be Google. Okay, then you want to also use a pipe to separate. A pipe separates, uh, for those of you who do not know what a pipe is, a pipe is the character above your, your backslash on your keyboard. So the character above your backslash. So you want to hit shift backslash to get the pipe. So back to, back to our select. So I'm, I want to select, how did you hear about us? My options to my users are going to be Google, Yahoo, another pipe, um, a word of, word of mouth, another pipe. If you take a look at this, the pipe actually separates each option. So let's go ahead and put another one and say walking. Okay. That ends my select. So I started with select. I asked the question. I want my users to see above my select. How did you hear about us? That's in parentheses. And I said is equals to these are my options. Google, Yahoo, word of mouth, walking. Each one of them in, in parentheses but separated by pipes. Now if I go ahead and save this and I came back to my website and I refreshed my page, you would notice that now we have a select box. How did you hear about us? And our options are Google, Yahoo, word of mouth, walking. That simple. I mean, you can make custom forms all day long. You can make custom inputs. You know, what about a radio button? What about, you know, uh, uh, um, I want to make a radio button. Or check boxes, for instance. So say let's let's go check boxes. So I go check box, and remember everything I'm explaining here is is it's listed right there. These are the general field types. 
general field types right there. I could use a select, a radio, a checkbox, a text area, a text. So a checkbox is, you know, checkboxes. You know, you want to give people options to check on something. Oh, by the way, there's an extra field. It's called selected. So just like this is showing you right here, Donald Duck selected. So what if right now my page, the default is Google because Google is the first one listed on my options. What if I wanted by default word of mouth to be selected, not Google? What I would have to do is right here for word of mouth, after word of mouth, right there, I would actually enter in selected. Now we'll talk about that when, once I save this page, but let's talk about this checkbox really quickly. So checkbox, the name, the question on the name of my checkbox is going to be, um, um, are you, oh, I guess let's just say sex, you know, sex would be the name of my checkbox. And my sex checkbox is going to be equals to male pipe or female so that's that's my checkbox if you look at that it's identical it's almost identical to my select so you have a very good idea of what you're doing okay remember I changed word of mouth to be the selected for for how did you hear about us let's go ahead and save our changes so far come back to our website and let's go ahead and refresh the page now you would notice that word of mouth is now the pre-selected of my drop down and now we have a new tab called sex male or female which was our radio button so I can select male or female I mean it is very very easy just all you have to remember you know is don't create a new line space that's gonna break the code everything has to be you know right next to each other separated by commas and a space that's it and once you put a comma and a space it's just as easy as defining what you want if it's a text field if it's a text area if it's a text field what what's the question what is the what's the name of that text field you know my my name is is Chris what is yours that's my text field let's make that Chris that's my text field I can put a comma right there if I save that and I come back to our website and I refreshed the page my name is Chris what is yours Ben you know just like that you know remember radio button so we talked about checkbox another another type of option is called a radio button the radio buttons are the round ones so so a radio button what do I want to name this I want to say um, how old are you okay that's the that's the name of my radio button so my radio I define my radio it's gonna be a radio I am also defining my question for my radio or my name the name of my radio how, how old are you then I'm also gonna go radio so now my options for my radio button so my options are okay you are 35 separated by maybe you are 25 separated by another pipe maybe you are 18 uh, let's go ahead and make 18 selected Let's separate that by a pipe again and say maybe you are 56 pipe again and say um, you know maybe you are 99 years old okay so now I've just created a radio button the question for my radio button is how old are you now the options for my radio button are 35 25 18 56 and 99 with 18 being the pre-selected now keep in mind radio buttons you can only select one radio button at a time while check boxes you can select multiple so like this checkbox where I said sex male or female 
I can add another one here that says so I can say pipe male female um, <laughs> maybe sex isn't a good one maybe say um, none none of the above now for a checkbox you can actually pre-select multiple fields so for a checkbox I can say male is selected and I can also say female is selected but for a radio button you can only have one selected option so let's go ahead and save that and see what see what all this looks like come back here refresh our page and what do you know we have a pre-selected male and female we have a pre-selected word of mouth on that list and how old are you we have 18 pre-selected so once again you are free to create you know modify one thing I would do I, I will advise is try to use the capture the capture is a way for protecting yourself from spammers. You don't want people to fill out, even though you have required fields. You know, people can type in a bunch of crap and it gets to you. You want to be able to have a capture. And forgive my friend for using the word crap, but you know, nobody really likes junk mail or spam. I hate them. So um, the capture allows you to actually have a human interaction to your website meaning someone actually physically has to type in a set of uh, characters in order for them to verify that they're actually a human submitting your form. Another thing you could do is apart from a capture, you could use something called a field capture, which is right there. These are built-in or uh, default types. So you've got default types and you've got built-in types and you've got custom types. Now what a field capture does is a field capture generates a text box but tells the user not to fill it out. So if it's a robot, if it's one of those spammers, they have this program that just fills out a bunch of forms and sends you a bunch of stuff, you know, and clogging up your spam box. Now, if they're a spammer and they fill out a field that you specified not to fill out, then the form isn't going to get sent because you've specified it's a field capture. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So we've added capture, comma, field capture, comma. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's come back here and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. As you can see, we now have a capture, which automatically, so if they cannot read this, they can always hit reload, and it just reloads a new capture for them but they have to fill this out or well, technically they don't have to fill this out right now because we did not make this a required field but you see this this is a required field by default because it says please don't fill this for the following field meaning that it's not required it's actually required to be empty so if a robot filled this out it means that person is a spammer automatically you know we can detect that person is a spammer but the effort of actually putting in a capture is defeated because we are not making this a required field. So what we want to do is put an exclamation mark after the word capture right there. So capture. So if I save that and I come back here and I refresh this page, now the word capture has the asterisks which means that for us to verify that you're a human and you're not a robot or an application or a software trying to spam our inbox we require you to fill out whatever you see here and you can reload it if you do not see it properly so I hope this is pretty helpful for you um, you know defining custom forms like I said you could define a custom form with all I've explained or you can simply just go with a default you know delete all that and just have your contact space colon space your email and that is all that is required except you want to send it to multiple emails at the same time which you would go comma you know second email third email fourth email as many emails as you want separated by commas and a space but that's really all you need 
just to display the default. And if I refresh this page, that's your default form. So you have options. You know, you can build a custom, complicated, very cool, you know, collect a lot, collecting a lot of information type of form, or you can just use the standard default. Either way, this video should serve as a really easy way to figure it out, as well as a lot of documentation, as you can tell we've put in a lot of documentation to explain what each field does and how to use each field so you know you know where each character goes and how to use each character when you're building your custom form thank you very much for watching and uh, once again just to recap your form only works on pages with a contact uh, contact template enabled so we went to pages we created a contact page and under page options we selected contact template as a template and we also listed our contact contact page on our menus so we can actually access our contact form right there so that's just a recap once again thank you very much for watching more videos to come um, and you guys have a good day